This is a quick video look at the YN562 speed light or flash. Uh, I bought this myself. This is the Sony version. The other version is for Canon and Nikon. It's identical except it has a metal foot and the standard ISO shoe mount. Looking over the unit, it's quite a nicely built unit. It looks very similar to a certain well known brand of flash. Um, Controls are very straightforward and simple. Starting on the left here, you have audio beeps on or off. That can be useful if you're triggering the flash and you want to know that it's uh, recycled, it's completed its recharge. So you'll hear the beep, you can turn that on and off, which is handy. Now you have a number of main modes. This is the manual mode where you can adjust the power output from full power down right the way down to. 128th and you can also adjust in third of the stop increments on each of the power levels so you have quite a fine degree of control over the flash output switch to the next mode is S1 again you can control the power of the flash S1 is for wireless off-camera flash and when you're in that mode as soon as it gets a flash signal the flash will fire so if you have a flash with a pre-flash you need to move to S2 that's the pre-flash suppression mode and that will ignore the first flash and then fire on the second flash the next mode is a stroboscopic flash and you can adjust the number of flashes and the Hertz speed there the high out number is quicker and the lower number is slower so you will see a longer delay between the flashes if I just change, you can change the number here and I change up to a faster speed you will see quicker so that's very quick strobe now that will vary depending on the power output obviously there is a limitation with power on that, you can't fire it at full power um, for a stroboscopic flash because it has to recharge and it won't be able to recharge in time. The recharge speeds are quite good on this flash, looking at a couple of seconds on full power, just over that, maybe two and a half seconds, so it's above average. Down here your pilot light and you have your four-way controller with the button here. Really simple, on and off, hold it and hold it again to turn it on. Now you notice there's a sound there, that's the zoom mechanism. That's the only thing which is slightly strange about the unit is um, the sound from the zoom. It just sounds a bit um, motorized. I haven't had any problems with the flash. Um, it's been working fine, so it's just a, a motor noise, I believe, or some gearing in there. Um, nothing's caused a problem in use, and I've been using it for quite a while now. Look at the top head part here. You have a flip out wide angle panel and a white card as well so that will push some light forward you can flip them back in and rotation on the head is as per a normal flash there's no although you see buttons here there's no locking mechanism on the flash you just freely rotate there's enough resistance that the flash won't move unless you want it to on the front there's a sensor which picks up when there's a light signal to fire it off camera. On the side here we have the battery compartment, metal hinge, you fit your four AAs in there. Build quality is actually pretty good, it's better than you'd expect for a flash at this price point. Uh, it feels quite solid, certainly no real complaints at all. Um, the plastics are tight and put together properly. Everything feels solid and firm as if it would last with a bit of normal use without any problems and I haven't had any problems with it. If we look here we have a PC sync for a studio flash and you have an option for a power pack on the side. Now the only thing to note is if you are in manual on the hot shoe the camera will not know that you are using a flash it will set its normal shutter speed and exposure so what I would suggest is that you go into manual on the camera and then when you shoe mount the flash uh, adjust the flash output or the exposure on the camera unlike a TTL flash this doesn't interact with the camera to adjust the flash output 
and the camera won't adjust its metering so it will fire as if a flash isn't there it will just tell it to fire via the hot shoe so bear that in mind that's not a huge problem except you will have to adjust your exposures and you will have to adjust the flash output ideally this is really used um, mostly as off-camera flash it makes an okay backup on the camera though as well but um, off-camera is probably where you will find more use for it now I'll just do a quick demonstration I've set it into S2 mode and I just have a compact camera here and I will fire the flash with the compact now the compact's using a pre-flash so that's why I've set it to S2 if I set it to S1 it will still fire but it will fire instantly um, so by the time the exposure is taken it would have missed it it would already have fired so bear that in mind most of the cameras out there will have a manual single flash output for dedicated flash guns for the cameras themselves um, Canon and Sony and Pentax would usually have pre-flash via the onboard flash and Nikons usually have a manual flash output so it doesn't really matter just make sure that you're in the correct mode for those so overall it's actually an excellent little flash very cost effective for off camera flash work you get a fairly decent padded case with it which isn't bad and you get the flash stand as well so overall I think for multi flash setups if you're looking to create um, a scene inside and you need maybe two three flashes or to add this as a backup flash you really you can't go wrong with this there are other models there are some with radio control there are higher end models which have full TTL which cost more but if you're looking for a basic flash which can be used on and off camera for very little outlay then this is certainly one of the better flashes that I've used